Good evening, everyone. It is Saturday, May 9th, 2020, and my name is Trevor Patrick Watkin, and I am broadcasting live from Axis Contemporary Music in beautiful Chicago, Illinois, as I do every night at 8 Central. So please, if you feel led, by, by no means feel pressured, please feel free to subscribe to this channel so you get notifications on when I'm going live next. Hint, it's tomorrow at 8. Actually, tomorrow, well, I'll get to that later, but I do want to talk a little bit about Axis Contemporary Music. This is my creative home. Axis Contemporary Music was founded by Seth Bosted in 2004. And we are a music school that focuses entirely on individual creativity of all of our students. We do teach primarily private lessons. However, we do offer classes in music theory designed for different age groups, as well as film scoring, as well as performance. And there are a number of us who do these live streams. And uh, you should definitely check us out. There's a link in the description box below. Check us out. Um, Seth Bosted is the host of Relevant Tones, and he also does lectures on Saturdays. So you should definitely come check us out. This is a really, really special place for me, and that is why I wanted to do these live streams from ACM. I often tell my students, I really hope one day you have a job you enjoy as much as I enjoy mine, because I really do enjoy my job, and that's why I wanted to share my place of employment with you. The chat is open. Please say hi. I can see you. So I'm, I've finally gotten to the point where I can actually like function. I can do all this stuff at once. Um, it's really exciting. So let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing tonight. So every Saturday, I like to do a larger masterwork. And tonight is going to be the uh, Mozart Second Flute Concerto in D major. And those of you that tuned in two weeks ago when I performed the Quants G major concerto might have remembered I had something to say about the Mozart at that time. At that time. Um, let's have a look back. This is an example of a piece of music that is written by a man who loved the flute, and it's obvious. This is why flutists love to play it. This is why I love to play it. However, Sometimes we have to play pieces by composers who loathed the flute. For example, in the classical time period, the name that most people are familiar with is Mozart. So thorough was his loathing of the flute that when asked to write a second flute concerto, he took his oboe concerto and was like, all right, transposed, peace, done. Here we are. Here we are, here we are. Now, I have to tell you, this isn't to say that I don't recognize Mozart's genius. Gosh, I can even hear the sound of my voice. Listen, Mozart was a genius, and I think that that word gets thrown around a little bit too much because we tend to use the word genius to describe people who are just clever or whatever. And Mozart's genius was that he was this conduit for music. The music just flowed through him. And so I am not for one minute speaking ill of Mozart or indeed speaking ill of this concerto that I'm about to play. It's an excellent concerto. It's a joy to play. And D major is a wonderful key to play in. It's a very happy key. It's the key that Handel chose to write the Hallelujah Chorus in. And uh, this is, it's sort of one, it's definitely a standard piece of rep from the, uh, from the from regular flute literature this is something that oh i see unable to connect to chat i'm so sorry i can't see your chat oh it's giving me an error message that makes sense i was like normally i see like a whole stream of people um hold on i'm gonna try something oh dear every time i try something something horrible happens so maybe it'll is it gonna do it yay oh my gosh i can see everybody this is amazing okay this is great Yes, I love this. This makes me so happy. Now I can see you. This is wonderful. I was like, oh man, nobody's chatting. Anyway, I don't, please don't let my tone of voice or the way that I'm speaking make you think that I think any less of this work or think any less of Mozart. I certainly don't. However, the thing, so his patron was a flute player and he really didn't, Mozart really didn't like the flute because at the time, the flute really, it had a lot of out of tune notes. It didn't really project very well. He just, he was more into the oboe. He was more into other things. He had other things to do. But as any composer will tell you, when someone says, I'll give you money and you write this piece, 
well, we'll do it. <laughs> and so that's what happened to him. However, because he couldn't be bothered to write another concerto for the flute, even though he was asked to, he just took his oboe concerto in C major and bumped it up a key. And then his patron, who was a Dutch flutist, refused to pay him. So, haha. -ha. Anyway, but we have this piece, and uh, I'm going to play it for you tonight because I wanted, the, ever since I did the quants and said everything I said about the Mozart, I wanted to make good. Like, I wanted to actually put my money where my mouth was and, and actually do the piece because it is worthy of being shared. And so I will share it with you tonight. So without further ado, this is Mozart's Flute Concerto number two in D major. I'm going to get all ready. Mm. Here we go. What? Oh, crud. Sorry. So, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the oboe concerto. Sorry. Just a second. I got the wrong, the wrong file. Oh, please. Here we go. Thank you. 
Those of you who might be more owl-eared, I guess, as opposed to eagle-eyed, would notice that, okay, so in, normally when you have a concerto, there is a portion of it set aside for a cadenza. And a cadenza is basically an improvisational solo uh, where the, the soloist is expected to create, you know, a show-off-y sort of part in the movement using themes from the movement, which I think is marvelous. Unfortunately, I mean, technically there were like two like tiny cadenzas, but when playing with the backing track, obviously, so, so when you're done with the cadenza, what you do, so you're making up your stuff and the orchestra is just sort of waiting patiently. And when you're done, you do a trill, but you look at the conductor, so you get this. You, that's what you do. But obviously, because I'm working with the backing track, there's just no clean way <laughs> of doing it. So rather than doing that, I just did a little flourishes here. But if this were a live situation, it would be slightly different. But anyway, for your consideration, Mozart's Flute Concerto, because after my little talk back two weeks ago, I felt it was necessary to play it as well, because it's deserving it's a it's a wonderful piece however uh you know i the one thing that i'm concerned about is i feel that it takes away slightly from the oboe concerto because uh, mozart loved the oboe way more than he loved the flute and of course the oboe concerto was really written for the oboe and it's slightly different i mean he made some like fluty changes when he changed it to the flute but um i i don't know it's i'm glad that you've had the opportunity to evaluate both just to let you know, tomorrow, tomorrow is double duty for me. Um, tomorrow, in honor of Mother's Day, I will be doing a full-length recital at 4 p.m. Central Time. I've put a link in the description box because it, I'm doing it on Facebook Live. Rather than doing it on YouTube, I'm doing it on Facebook because it's just more of a central place. Just as, you know, I wanted, and I really wanted to make sure, like, for example, I wanted to make sure that my mom would be able to watch and I'm really excited because my grandmother, my 95-year-old grandmother, is going to be able to watch because uh, her, the retirement community that she lives in, they're going to make it possible for her. And that is everything. I don't think my grandmother has seen her perform live, oh shoot, I think in probably 13 years. I think so. I, yeah, 13 years. I'm, I don't think she's seen me perform live since I moved to Chicago. So that's really special for me. Um, and I hope you'll join me. Uh, what I did on Facebook, please click the link and have a look at it. Uh, it is open to the public and I put rough time estimates when I'm going to get to certain pieces. All of the pieces on the recital are going to be drawn from the music that I've done in these live streams. However, there are I think seven, six or seven pieces on the on the concert that were done before I was feeding the sound through OBS, but when I was still having my my, my uh my speakers next to the mic and so i ran the recital earlier today and i'm just really pleased with how how much better the sound is um, of course the sync issue is is an ongoing thing with me i'm getting better and better and better at it and i'm i'm praying tonight was synced up for you lord knows i tried but that's what it's all about though isn't it i mean it's about being together it's about live music it's about sharing what we have and it's about being with each other exactly as we are and that's what i'm doing for you and that's what you're doing for me so i really hope that you'll join me if you don't join me on facebook though i'll be right back here at eight like i'm, st I'm still doing my normal live stream at eight so no press like you're gonna have plenty of opportunities um but i do hope you join me for either or both but anyway thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for sharing Letting me share this with you and, and sharing your thoughts and giving me your time to just, I don't know, have a walk back and look at this stuff I'm playing for you. So anyway, please stay happy, please stay healthy, and uh, I will definitely see you tomorrow.